Hey guys, it's Con for Hollywood Studios here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Hydra the Revenge, the extremely unique B&M floorless coaster at Dorney Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So, starting off with the stats for this ride, it measures 95 feet in height with a drop of 105 feet that is taken at a 68 degree angle, reaches a maximum speed of 53 miles an hour, has seven inversions that includes a heartline roll, an incline dive loop, a zero G roll, a corkscrew, a cobra roll, and another corkscrew, and it has a track length of 3,198 feet. So the stats are what you'd expect from a floorless coaster. However, the height and speed are a little low, and the length is on the lower side too. But I do think this is a pretty good floorless coaster. It's definitely not my favorite, and I'll get into why. Because layout-wise, it's a really, really good ride. It has very, very cool and unique elements. This is not like any other B&M floorless coaster. And I think that's what makes it so cool. But there is one factor that pretty much ruins it for me, this ride. So... The theme, it's actually pretty cool the way they themed it. Um, obviously, the area that this ride sits in just looks gorgeous. Dorney Park really knows how to do their landscaping and make their rides look good. The front entrance sign is just awesome. And the whole plot of land the ride sits on is great. It's very photogenic. The paint job is just still great after so many years because this coaster was built in 2005. So it looks great for being that old. Um, the theme... It's themed to Hydra, which is getting its revenge on Hercules. That's why it's called Hydra's the Re Hydra the Revenge. And for those of you who don't know, there used to be a big wooden coaster named Hercules in this former spot. So that's kind of what it's themed to. Uh, if you don't really know that there was a ride called Hercules there, it doesn't make much sense. But if you do, it's a really cool idea. And I'm very surprised that they actually went for a theme like this. It's very cool to call back to one of their old coasters, and I really think it's just awesome. So getting into the ride experience, first you're going to go through that awesome JoJo roll. And the hang time on that is just crazy. It is a really, really cool element. Then you're going to go through a right-hand turn, up the lift hill, and then you're going to drop down this very unique drop for a floorless coaster. Floorless coasters, generally, you'll have the pre-drop and then you have a turning drop. This drop just goes straight down. There is no pre-drop. There is no turn to it. It is just down. And I must say, when you're in the back row, you get some great airtime on this element. It is a very good drop. And that is taken at a 68 degree angle. So because you're so low to the ground, it's not that tall, you're really feeling that angle of descent. It is really, really good. So then you're going to fly into the first element, the incline dive loop. If I'm going to be totally honest, it really doesn't feel like an inversion, but it is classified as an inversion, and it does go the certain angle that an inversion would go, so it does make sense that it's classified as that. But it really didn't feel like an inversion. It was one of the eh elements of the ride. Then you're going to fly through a zero-G roll. This is not that snappy, but it's very graceful, and you get some good hang time on it. Then you're going to fly through an oversized corkscrew. Again, not snappy, but you get some great hang time on it. Then you're going to fly through the heart-shaped cobra roll. I don't even know if you could call it heart-shaped. It's very weird. The angle that you come into it, like going up through the half loop, it's strange. Like, you're not going a full 90 degrees straight up. You know what I mean? It's, it's strange, and you can definitely see it in the footage I'm showing. It does not look like a cobra roll, but it is, and it's really cool. So then after that, you're going to fly down. You're going to go through a little, like, almost twisted airtime hill. You don't get airtime on it, but it's a cool element. Then you're going to pop up into another little drop. Um, you get a little bit of airtime on this element in the back row, but not much. Then you're going to fly through the final corkscrew. Um, again, this might be the whippiest um, inversion on the ride, but even then, it's not that whippy. This ride's supposed to be a little more graceful and less intense than the other b and floorless coasters. And you can definitely see that present throughout the layout. So then you're going to fly through a big left-hand turn and then a right-hand turn into the brakes. So this ride, it's at pretty good length. Um, the track length is shorter, but I don't think that really affects the ride that much. It feels like a perfect layout and a perfect length for the type of coaster this is. Now my biggest con with this ride. This is the reason why I don't think it's the greatest coaster in the world. Well, this is the reason why I don't think it's like, better than Talon or better than Steel Force at Dorney. The Rattle. When I first rode this ride back in 2017, I thought it was fantastic. There was no rattle present whatsoever, and it was just a great ride, and it was really fun. 
But then I wrote it again in 2018 and in 2019, and ouch, there is a major rattle present on this ride, and it's not pleasant at all. And for some reason, it seems rougher in the front row than it is in the back row. And f- I do go to Dorney Park, like, every year. Uh, we might even go twice this year in 2019. But I don't know if it's just because I keep riding on the same train. Because I know there was another train that didn't have a rattle. But I think they both have rattles now. I'm not 100% sure which trains I was riding on. But, yeah, the rattle, it's it's bad. I mean, in the back row, it's not as bad as the front row, but the back row is still kind of rough. It's it's really weird that from one year to the next, it goes from ultra smooth to re- pretty rough. Um, but that is my biggest flaw with this ride. Um, also, it is a little forceless, um, but again, it's more graceful, like I said. But yeah, it's it's not the most intense ride in the world. Uh, I really like the elements on this ride, though. It has a very unique layout. And that is why it will get a decently good score um, in the end. But, I don't know, the roughness, it really takes away from this ride. Because you look at it, and it looks like it could be a smooth ride. But it's really, really not. And it's just a shame, because this ride in 2017 was so good, but then just took a pretty big dip down in the 2018 and 2019 seasons. At least in my opinion. So, for this ride's final score... I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think if it didn't have that really, really strong rattle, it'd definitely be well into the 8 or 8.5 range. But I think because of that rattle, I have to put it lower because the rattle is painful, and it's a roughness. It's not just a rattle. So that'll conclude this video, my Hydra the Revenge review. Leave your comments below on your thoughts on this coaster. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, guys. (laughs) 